Okay, this is the second hour of Physics 1A for April 28th, and what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be talking about this lab assignment that I've just given to you. So if you don't know where to find it, you can go to Canvas, and I, I don't know what Canvas looks like for you, but I think you probably see some kind of modules like this when you go to the home page. Um, and one of the modules is called Labs. And within that, there, there are two that are going to be lit up for you now. There's one, which is M28. This is where you're going to turn it in. I have it set to be due for May 13th now, which means you have two weeks to do this, which I, th I think should be plenty of time. And then um, the other one is this, M28 Ballistic Pendulum F20 PDF. So if you pull this one up and then probably download it because um, it's going to be kind of hard to read in Canvas since they put that. But, um, but he so here's the lab. And this was written by Dr. Sullivy as a way to kind of um, get a feel for what this should be like. This is a picture of the lab equipment that you would be using if we were in person. And um, what it consists of is basically a launcher, which is right here, which is a spring-loaded gun that fires a ball, one of these balls down here. And the ball, basically what happens is the ball gets caught by this little uh, armature here, like this little device. The ball basically gets fired out of here, it gets caught inside of here. And then this piece is a pendulum that can swing up. And in fact, it actually measures angles right here. So what happens is there's like a little piece of plastic. And when this thing swings up, it'll swing up to some point, And the plastic will read off an angle right here. And that's primarily what you end up doing in the lab is you cock the gun with this little loader right here. And then you fire it, you get an angle, and you repeat that over and over and over again. Can you work together for the labs? Um, yeah, I, I guess so. I mean, it's just like homework. I mean, this is basically just another homework assignment at the end of the day. That's really all it is, I, with some kind of numerical calculations. So I, I want to kind of draw a picture of what's happening because I think, uh, I kind of think that you're, you're going to need a bit of a picture of what's happening to understand what's going on. So we'll just say ballistic pendulum. Now, we did a problem like this before. But basically what happens is you've got your launcher. You cock it with a spring, so there's a ball here. The ball basically fires out here and comes out with some velocity that we're going to call the initial. It is then caught by this arm right here. So once the ball gets into here and it's caught, then the arm ends up swinging through an angle right here. It is like the bullet problem that we did, yeah, exactly. The arm swings through an angle, and I'm going to draw a better picture of this here in a second, but basically you're given the angle in this case, and what you're supposed to figure out is if you know the mass of this piece, which is big M, you know the mass of the ball, which is little m, and you know the angle here, so you're gonna you're gonna have the theta. Like I think I think for you I think it's 37, right? Let's see. Where does it say here? Yeah, 37 degrees. You get the angle, which is 37 degrees. You're supposed to use this angle to go back and find the initial velocity of the ball. Okay. Now, in order to do that, it helps to kind of draw a picture here. I could let you all do this yourself, but I, I do I do want you to have a little bit of a heads up on this. So the, the pendulum starts here, and it swings up to like here, okay? So I'm just going to draw a simplified version of this. So this is going to be the whole thing. This is going to be M plus M. You're also going to need to know what's called RCM, which is going to be the distance to the center of mass. And that's this distance right here. Okay, this is also given 28.8 centimeters, theta is 37 degrees, right? And you're supposed to figure out the height, and then you're supposed to figure out the initial speed. Those are the two things that you need to do. So I'm just going to say that this object is traveling along like a curved path like this. And what we can do is we can basically say that if it starts off at that elevation and it ends up at this elevation right here, then we can say that, whoops, come on. 
Ah, whatever, it's not working. Okay, so this is Y initial. This is Y final. So Y final minus Y initial is gonna be equal to the quantity H that you're trying to calculate. So H is gonna be this little distance down here. RCM is the length of the arm. So this is also RCM. So to find H right here, what you need to do is if you measure theta, right? So we're, we know what theta is. Then we can find H by saying that um, if I take RCM minus the distance between here and here would be equal to RCM cos theta. I think that's equal to H, right? Can you all see that? I don't know how to write this. I, it sucks, I can't write sideways, you know? I, it's really hard to write sideways. Kind of did it, I don't know, it's not great. That distance is RCM cos theta. So, so that's H. And I think that's probably the only part of this lab that's probably gonna trip you up, but we're gonna go through the rest of the steps anyway. So basically you need to use conservation of energy to figure out um, the velocity V that these objects have. So V is gonna be the velocity here. V initial is gonna be the velocity before the collision, right? So V naught is ball velocity before the collision. The collision is the collision of the ball with the cup. And then V is the velocity of both. After the collision. Okay. So I've defined all the variables. Okay, so let's go back to the, the, the write up. Okay, so you read all of this, it says in the real lab you take measurements of the angle. M is the mass of the ball, big M is the mass of the pendulum without the ball in it. V initials of the initial velocity of the launch, V is the velocity of the ball plus pendulum after the collision. So it says, use the conservation law to derive V, and then you're gonna need to find H as I described, and then you're gonna need to go back and find V initial. And now these are all gonna be symbolic equations, I believe. Oh no, 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 this is gonna be a number. This is gonna be symbolic, this is gonna be symbolic. And then here's your final, here's your initial velocity number that you're going to write here. Now you don't have to fit everything into this table right here. Um, I don't really personally care how you submit your data or your answers here. Um, it says, it says, if you have a printer, please print this. Do your work directly on this paper and then scan it and submit it through Canvas. You do not have to print it. I, I don't. You don't need to do all of this. You could. You you can probably annotate on the document here though, right? Like you could easily take this document and you could probably write in this space right here in handwriting if you have a, you know what I mean? Like um, you could probably find a way to do that and you could write here in handwriting and then you, you could do all of this digitally and then upload it if you want to. Or you could just turn in a piece of paper that says part A, V equals this, part B, H equals this. That's fine too, okay? Does that make sense? You don't need to necessarily submit it with this, but just do it. Do so in a way that's clear. You know, present present all of your answers in a way that I can follow, um, and be really neat. I mean, I'm going to grade for neatness. I'm going to grade for accuracy and stuff like that for units and stuff. Okay. Okay. So then in part two, it says you move the pendulum arm out of the way. You shoot the ball horizontally several times from a desktop. You mark the places on the floor it hits, but using a sheet of carbon white paper, the carbon leaves a spot. Blah 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 blah. Okay. So in this part, what happens is you take the same gun and you would put it on, on one of the sides of the room. So you, you launch, you put the gun launcher right here. You put your ball in there. The ball is going to get shot out right here. Now the idea is that in the first part, you found the initial velocity that the ball gets launched out at. 
basically what you were doing in the first part was finding how fast this spring gun launcher launches a ball by measuring an angle and then reversing back and solving for what that speed was. So if you know the speed, right, then if you did a different experiment, that experiment should also bear out the same speed. So the second experiment you do is you take the launcher and you put it on the side of a table and the table is some height above the ground H. And then the ball fires and you measure this distance here. X. Now, of course, you're not going to measure anything, right? Instead, what's going to happen is you're going to be given the value. But the first thing you'll do is to derive the velocity of the ball in terms of X. And then you measure the height to be 97.8. And you measure X to be 220. Use that to calculate the initial value of the velocity. And then it says these values should be similar. You're going to average them. Okay. And the next part, which is unfortunately the part you can't do, which is what this lab is all about, is after doing these calculations in the real lab, what we would do is you'd come to the front of the classroom and you would take your launcher. And now what I would do is I would tell you to launch it at an angle because there's a way to do this. I think in this case, the angle you're given is 25 degrees for everybody. So you put your ball in the launcher. And now what you're trying to figure out is if you launch it from some height H right here, some new height, right? What you need to do is you have to predict where it's going to land. And the way this occurs in the lab is basically that um, you get one shot, and what you can do is you basically, you're given a, um, there's like a bullseye that's placed on the ground down here, and you're supposed to put the center of the bullseye right where you think the ball is going to land, and then your grade is based on where it lands. Now, luckily for you, you don't need to go through that. Because what usually happens, this is a really fun lab, honestly. It's too bad we can't do this in person because, yeah, it, it really is fun. Especially the last part where people are really sure that they did the measurements right. They're really sure they did the measurements right. And they go to take the shot and they're like nowhere near the bullseye. <laughs> and then they're just like, wait, can I go again? And it's like, no, sorry, that's your grade. So, anyway, it can, it can be pretty harsh. But, but... Um, most of the other labs are actually harder than this. So this one's kind of nice because it's like, e even though it's kind of frustrating that all of your grade is weighted on can you make a prediction and how well you can make that prediction, um, the other labs are even harder. So <laughs> it's like, I don't know. It's kind of refreshing to know that like you're done, you're kind of done because the rest of the labs, what you have to do when you're done is you have to go home and you have to do a lot of calculations and stuff. But this one, you're kind of just done. So anyway, here's your lab simulation. <laughs> tell, me, tell me what you all think about it when we're done. That's it. So I don't know how long this will take, um, but if the, I think the instructions are pretty clear. And you know, I read through it. I understood everything, but um, you know, I, I've already done the lab, right? So. You know, I hope I hope this this brief intro into this has helped you to understand what you need to do. That's right, Summer. Yeah, exactly. The lab gives you the data, and you're going to use that to compute some things. So, you know, it's kind of like just an extended multi-step homework problem. It's it's not going to be too hard. And you know, if you do have questions, I I do have office hours on Friday, and then I have office hours Monday, Wednesday, Friday next week. You can ask me questions next week during class. You can obviously ask me questions in Discord. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Any questions? And I'll I'll put the uh, the video of what we just did up on on YouTube in case you need to go back and and rewatch it. So yeah, thanks everyone. Hope everyone has a nice uh, weekend. And um, this is due two weeks from now, so you've got plenty of time, and it won't take that much time. But be sure you do it because this is going to affect your final grade. You know, this is going to go into your lab grade, which is like 5% of your grade, which it's not much, but you don't want to get no points. So thanks, everyone. Bye. Have a nice day. Be sure to do the, uh, the survey. Don't be nice. Okay. I need to upload these.
these videos. Oh, I need to stop recording.